name is Brian Brown. I'm with New York State IPM. I'm the Integrated Weed Management Specialist. So I cover not only weed management in fruit, but also field crops, vegetables, and ornamentals. Uh, and I must confess that my background is primarily weed management in vegetables uh, and some in field crops. But a lot of the a lot of the same principles carry over to fruit, especially strawberries. Uh, so I'll, I'll be going over some of those principles early on, and then uh, later go over some of the specifics related to Madden Row uh, strawberries. So just to start off, uh, let me see a show of hands of who has ever let a weed go to seed. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Yeah, I was curious about the effects of, of letting weeds go to seed, and so actually in one of my trials of, in the field of onions, I purposefully let uh, a few of these plots, uh, let the weeds go to seed. And the result was that the next year there were ten times as many weeds emerging in those areas than the rest of the field. Um, so this, this really shows that you want to try to avoid letting weeds go to seed. Um, and Inevitably, it will happen that you can get some weeds going to seed. So, so there are actually ways that you can remove weed seeds from your soil. Does anyone know how to remove weed seeds from the soil? Yeah. Okay, kind of. I, I was asking kind of a trick question. But the answer I was going for is to encourage them to germinate and then kill them. So, that, so a stale seed bed period which probably a lot of you implement already. Uh, encourage weed seeds to germinate um, when, you're, when you have the ground fallow by tilling, maybe cultipacking, maybe even irrigating. Get as many weeds to germinate as you can so you can come through and kill them. That removes all of those weed seeds from the soil. Um, and so I, I tend to think about weed seeds a lot. And, you know, cover cropping is a great uh, practice for suppressing weeds, but I think an even greater benefit, since I think about weed seeds, is if you can terminate the cover crop before all of the weeds that have come up in it go to seed. And so again, you're kind of removing all those weed seeds from the soil. It's like another stale seed bed period. Uh, so crop rotation, I think, I think if you can Adjust your crop rotation a little bit to allow for some longer fallow periods where you can do these stale seed bed periods. Um, you can really draw down the number of weed seeds in your soil. Um, if you can't do that, some, some shorter season crops like salad greens, I mean, there's not many weeds that have time to set seed by the time you harvest and till in salad greens. And, and there's some other crops like short season crops like that. Um, and so it's kind of another stale seedbed period. But really, I mean, strawberries, especially perennial matted row strawberries, are difficult for weed management. So in your crop rotation, you want to be rotating into something that's easy, something like corn or soy, um, where you've got different herbicides, there, there's um, different uh, tillage dates, they compete with the weeds better, and so all of these things can kind of um, prevent the types of weeds that, that tend to dominate in strawberries from uh, dominating in these other crops. So you can kind of get a handle on them with crop rotation. So uh, in speaking with, with some of you, it seems like perennial weeds are a real issue for, for, uh, for perennial uh, strawberry production. And um, I think it helps to think about the biology of the perennial weeds and looking at controlling them. A lot of them have these, these rhizomes or underground um, storage reserves that get them through the winter. And so if, if you're looking at trying to uh, select herbicides to tackle these weeds, you you're, want to be looking at systemic herbicides that are, get translocated down into the roots to attack these storage reserves. Uh, so glyphosate Roundup uh, tends to be most effective there. For organic growers, um, it's a lot harder. You've got to keep attacking these underground storage reserves by repeated tillage and it can take a, a fallow period of 
of a few months to really draw down those, those storage reserves. If you are kind of drowning in perennial weeds, but you still want to do strawberries, I'd recommend uh, day neutrals, uh, which are grown as annuals. You can use you can use the tillage and the roundup at the before and after the season um, to get a better handle on those perennials. Um, and then the black plastic doing a fair amount of weed suppression there as well. Uh, a little bit on cultivation, so. Uh, cultivation can be really effective to control weeds in the row middles between your rows. Um, this, this is a picture of an older cultivator um, with a uh, couple sets or gangs of these chisel type blades on either side of the strawberry row. Um, this is belly mounted which is e easier to steer than a rear mounted cultivator. Um, it's an older model, and I'd say you know, older models and older cultivators work great as long as you can find parts for them and if you're mechanically minded. Um, if not, I'd say take a look at some of the newer models. Um, some of the newer innovations, uh, at least for uh, rear mounted cultivators, include rear uh, steering adjustment. So you've got someone driving the tractor, but then the person back here kind of correcting six inches left or right, depending on uh, any mistakes that the tractor driver is making. And these are typically used with, with more precise in-row tools, like finger weeders, which are uh, these rotating uh, rubber um, fingers that uh, are meant to kind of uproot weeds in the row. Uh, or torsion weeders, which are made of spring steel. And again, they're made to kind of undercut weeds uh, in the crop row, but the spring allows them to go around a larger crop plant, like a, a well-rooted strawberry. Uh, and then getting into herbicides, um, probably many of you have a, a boom sprayer, and these are um, easiest to use with herbicides that you can spray right over the top of the strawberries and so we've got a few options there um, we've got some pre-emergence options Devranol and Daxol um, a little bit stronger on grasses I'd say Sinbar another pre-emergence herbicide a little bit stronger on, um, on broadleaf weeds uh, for post-emergence, we have some grass weed herbicides and then stinger for um, broadleaf control. Um, and for those of you with a hooded sprayer, uh, you, you, there are a few more pre and post <laughs> options. Uh, or a wick applicator can let you apply post herbicides um, directly to the weeds without worry of um, of getting any on the crop. Um, and so with with a hooded sprayer or a directed application, you can use uh, for pre-emergence, Gold, Chateau, and Prowl. Um, and you can also use these on the dormant strawberries, so in early April or late November. Uh, and then with post, um, AIM has some post activity. 2,4-D uh, is a broadleaf herbicide that, I, that can also be used on um, the dormant berries. Sides, Vermoxone, Firestorm, those are, are contact herbicides. So they basically kill the parts of the plant that are touched. Um, in thinking about which herbicides you want to use, I think it's, it's, it's worth thinking about this issue of herbicide resistance which is becoming a big issue in other parts of the U.S. and is, is becoming a bigger problem in New York. Um, herbicide resistance develops when growers over rely on one type of herbicide and use it year after year again and again, maybe multiple times a year. Um, and so to kind of combat that, uh, the Weed Science Society of America, WSSA, has, has promoted this um, group numbering system in which they've grouped herbicides based on uh, how they actually act in the plant. Um, 
and they've given the different groups uh, numbers. And so, um, based on their system of the different numbers, and they're in different colors here, growers can select herbicides that use different modes of action, and uh, in that way they can delay the onset of herbicide resistance. And um, if, if you're wondering where to find information about um, these WSSA group numbers, they should, uh, they're more and more commonly being listed on the herbicide label, uh, but if they're not, you can take a look at your handy-dandy Cornell Pest Management Guidelines for Berry Crops, and there's a great table that lists the group numbers for most of the berry herbicides. And it also lists uh, most of the common weeds and um, has a nice table of the control efficacy um, for those herbicides. Uh, another great thing about this uh, guidelines, which is available um, online, about thirty-five dollars. Is that right, Laura? Um, yeah, <laughs> around there, maybe forty. Um, is there's a table of um, kind of a suggested um, starting plan of, for um, herbicide and cultivation control, the timeline, and I've kind of boiled it down here, um, and. <coughs> just kind of briefly go over it, starting with the tillage. Uh, goal and chateau um, need to be used, I think, 30 days prior to planting. Prowl and aim also have to be used prior to planting, but a little bit closer, I think, maybe a 10-day window. Um, and they suggest post or select for uh, emerged um, perennial grasses, uh, as well as Devernal for uh, further pre-control, cultivation, more pre's cultivation, and then um, sinbar and, and mulching at the end of the year. In the fruiting year, after you remove the mulch, uh, those berries should still be dormant for a little while, so you can use Gol or Chateau again, uh, Devernal for a little bit more grass weed support. I think it's a good suggestion to use these post-emergence herbicides here to set yourself up uh, for a clean uh, harvest condition. Um, and then, of course, with renovation, you can start with 2,4-D and then the mowing, maybe even narrowing of the rows with cultivation, um, and then pre-emergence, sinbar and prowl, uh, further cultivation and pre-emergence herbicides toward the end of the year. So um, one thing I have listed here is the different uh, WSSA group numbers, and you can see that um, we're not we're not over relying on any one group, which is great. Um, and so I think that's just something you want to keep in mind when you're looking at um, what you're going to be doing to manage weeds. So really, I think this is a great starting point. But you know, every farm is different. You're going to have different weeds. Every year is different with the weather. So I'm curious, I want to take, I'm going to continue on talking, but maybe we can pause for a minute or so if anyone has anything to add to, you know, adjustments that they've made to this kind of general plan um, to the conditions on, on your own farm. Does anyone want to share anything related to the weeds that are present, what you're doing to combat different <coughs> perennial weeds, how much you're using pre uh, cultivation, yeah, we've got uh, on Eastern Long Island, in Suffolk County. We've got horseweed or mare's tail. It's a really tall. Yes, you know, it goes to eight feet, and, and neither paraquat nor glyphosate works well on it. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend for that? Horseweed is one that that is becoming a bigger and bigger problem in in field crops, especially um, there. I believe has been documented glyphosate resistant horseweed in New York um, and it's kind of the seed is wind blown so it's working its way east. Apparently it doesn't have much leaf area once once it gets to be a big plant, you know? Yeah, they 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 kind of use the uh, the Coca-Cola or the soda pop uh, rule in that once once it gets taller than a can of soda, it is it's not it's almost not killable. Um, no. And so, 
you really need to target it when it's young. Um, 2,4-D, I've heard, has some, some action on it. Um, and it's fairly susceptible to physical disturbance. So cultivation, uh, making sure to, to till the ground before planting uh, can help because it, it emerges in two, two kind of distinct peaks. It can emerge in the fall or the spring. Um, and so if it's emerging in the fall and, and it's resistant to your burn down glyphosate application, then you know, it's, it's already developed that rosette over the winter and it's already past the Coke bottle stage. Um, so definitely uh, add in the tillage if you're not already doing that. Um, yeah, so tillage and 2,4-D, I think, are two things I would look at. Any other um, comments? Yep. I just want to comment that that prowl is prowl H2O, right? It's yes. Like, yeah. yeah. Just so nobody uses the wrong. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was trying to keep things uh, brief. Yeah, that's a good good point, Laura. Um, yes? We're um, rotating with... Uh, Glyphosate resistant crop help reduce weed seed? It would, it would certainly allow you to uh, control more of the perennial weeds that are really susceptible or more susceptible to glyphosate because it's a systemic and works its way down into that, that root system. But if you had germination of the annual weed and grass seeds when you sprayed glyphosate, wouldn't that? Help reduce the weed seed That's right. Soil. Yeah, at any time, any time you're controlling weeds successfully, you're and you're not letting them set seed, you're essentially removing those weed seeds from the soil. Yeah. So successful weed management really just becomes more and more successful as you start depleting the number of weed seeds in your soil. It gets easier and easier. Whereas, unfortunately, the other way, if you if you're letting weeds go to seed, it gets harder and harder because they're making more and more. So, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, um, oh, yeah, I wanna. So we've had, uh, this 2,4-D label is a little bit, you're not real definite as when you have to use it. And so we use it on strawberries late in the fall when you get like some warm weather in November. Mm -hmm. And it seems to work pretty well against dandelions. And then last year we put it on in the spring because uh, the label says you can. and. Uh, it looked like the strawberry plants like wilted and thought we really hurt them. Mm -hmm. But they like grew right back out of it. And mm -hmm. we control was really good. Was so this when the strawberries were still dormant? Or? This was after we took the mulch off. And it was warm uh -huh. weather. It probably was uh, maybe early May. Okay. Huh. I was, I was pleasantly surprised yeah. how it came huh. back. So anyway. Okay. Yeah, uh, any, any final comments? Okay, I'm uh, going to move on to, um, I just want to give another example of a weed management plan. Uh, this is Shank Berry Farm in Pennsylvania. Uh, I've been speaking with John Shank, um, and as you can see, he grows vegetables uh, in addition to the berries and some field crops. Uh, John has an, an excellent crop rotation. He, he wants... He's aiming for five years between strawberry planting. So he finishes up his strawberries here in year zero. Then he goes into sweet corn, um, which you know before and after the sweet corn lets him spray glyphosate, get a hold of some of the perennial weeds. Then he moves into either alfalfa or maybe maybe soybeans, some kind of legume um, that he can. He can continually mow the alfalfa and get a hold of some of the, the annual weeds that uh, resulted from the years of strawberries. Uh, follows that with winter rye, which he then um, harvests for straw mulch to use in his strawberries. Um, and then follows that with sorghum sudan grass, a hybrid that does not set seed, not produce seed in the first year. He mows that in August when any um, annual weeds in it might be ready to set seed. Um, so he mows that to prevent that from happening. The sorghum sudan, I believe, bounces back. 
but then is winter killed. Um, and so there's still some kind of stubble and stumps left over, so he comes in and cultipacks while the ground is still frozen in the next spring. And then he no-till transplants strawberries into all of that sorghum Sudan grass residue. And so that, that residue really provides a lot of weed suppression in April. He, he, he puts on um, Prowling's 2 0 um, <coughs> but he probably could get away with it because of all the weed suppression by the residue. Um, another th good thing that John does is he scouts. He waits until the Prowling's 2 0 to kind of wear off. Maybe some, some thinning or some holes in the residue, let, start letting weed through, and then he'll come through and, and start cultivating. Um, I think it's a good idea to follow the cultivation with a pre-emergent herbicide because um, you know, often cultivation can stimulate some weed uh, germination. Um, some more pre-emergence herbicides uh, in August, cultivation, he uses Stinger, um, to control some of his thistles, and then Chateau in the fall. You can only use Chateau once a year, I believe, and so he, he would prefer to use it in the fall on the dormant strawberries in the fall rather than in the spring um, because of his winter annual weed problems. Following year, he removes the mulch, uh, the Devernal gets him through harvest. He's still got quite a bit of crop of uh, sorghum Sudan residue um, and the mulch residue. Um, the same renovation procedure as I talked about earlier. Again, he scouts until the pre's start to wear off and then he cultivates. Um, again, with the same stinger and chateau uh, in subsequent years. What if anyone have any comments on this? Yeah. Curious if, if he has issues in the initial cultivating with the amount of residue that he still has at the Sudan ground. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that actually on the, on the next slide. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think his long rotation that reduces the number of weed seeds in the soil and reduces those perennial weed pressure then all that residue from the sorghum Sudan, that helps, and, and the scouting as well. So he, he's, he's reduced the number of herbicide applications uh, compared to the previous uh, table I showed you. Um, does anyone know what type of cultivator John uses? <coughs> so John actually started a company called Hillside Cultivator. Who's heard of that? Yeah, so... The hillside cultivator is a great choice for strawberries. Um, it, you can angle, you can turn these uh, gangs to throw soil into the row or move soil out of the row, uh, as, as well as use them on the slant. Um, and they are very good at shedding residue. So that, that gets at your question earlier. Um, he has added a, uh, a, an option to use finger weeders as well to get a little bit closer to the row, but still it's not, there's no rear steering, so it's just the tractor driver steering it, so you can't, you can't be so precise, but it's not such a big deal if you're, if he, you know, he likes to narrow his strawberry rows anyways in the fall, he likes narrow rows so that he can control more of his ground, a greater percentage of the ground with cultivation, and he thinks that the narrow rows give him better airflow. Um, and so this is at renovation, and you can see the hillside does a really good job. It's probably one of the best cultivators at shedding residue because it has these kind of crossbars that um, force any residue to exit out the back if, if it gets taken off. Um, so, so the other thing that, that John does and hit, that I mentioned earlier is the scouting. And so the scouting is used to uh, determine which weeds survived the previous control efforts and which new, we new weeds are emerging. Um, Scouting efforts typically involve going out with some kind of sketched map 
of your field, uh, taking notes on the weed species that are present, the severity of you know how um, how severe the um, infestation of weeds is for each species and their growth stage, how big they are. Um, so all of that information gets factored into your your management decisions. Um, and I think two detailed scouting efforts, um, at least, are helpful per year, in addition to your kind of keeping an eye on the field. Um, early season scouting, um, you know, some of Marvin's research actually has shown that, that um, the early season in the strawberries is, is the most critical in terms of um, the plants being affected by the weed competition. So this scouting effort is used to make sure that the right weed controls are selected so that you don't lose any yield. Late season, you're looking at how did I do? Uh, you know, which weeds found gaps in my management? How can I change my management next year to fill those gaps. Um, scouting kind of follows the typical M or W pattern through the field. Um, and there are new scouting apps available for your smartphone or tablet. I'm kind of a pencil and paper type person, so I haven't tried these yet. I just got a smartphone last week. Uh, but they, they would let you digitize your scouting efforts and save them electronically so you're not flipping through years of, of data. Um, so I think I've got a couple minutes left. Any, any uh, questions on anything I've talked about or, or any other um, concerns that you have or challenges? Nobody wants to share their secret. Um... <laughs> I do have, uh, I know that there's a couple of people that have used, I think um, Brad Majic did the work about really low rates of Sinbar that he used repeatedly through the spring and that was very successful for a strawberry um, field and I don't know if anybody's using that in this room but that was quite a while ago. Mm -hmm. that, that does, that does tend to work. Yeah. Yeah, Sinbar you could use multiple times. I'm not sure, is there, do you know if there's a cap on I think them? there is, yeah. Is. There's a cap and there's also a cap on uh, organic matter and stuff. <coughs> okay, yeah. And it, it is rugged on some varieties too. You have to be careful, but that low rate was the key to being able to use it on some of those varieties that normally had problems. Mm -hmm. Low rate and small weeds. Low rate and small weeds, yes. that's right. But you're doing it every two weeks, so theoretically, yeah, yeah. you're going <laughs> to. Any other comments about weed control? All right, Brian, thank you All very right. much. Thanks.